एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर योगेश वन सेकेंड आई वेलकम यू टू दिस सेशन इन जेनेटिक्स एंड मॉलिकुलर बायोलॉजी लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर डीलिंग विद द सेम कॉम्बिनेसी बी आर सेवन पॉइंट फोर नाउ इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टेक्निक्स विच हैव बीन यूज एज अ टूल फॉर रिकॉमेंड इन डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी लाइक वी हैव डिस्कस एंजाइम्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेक्टर्स ऑल्सो नाउ वी आर डिस्कसिंग द टेक्निक्स with which we can identify a desired sequence of our dna rna or maybe the protein or the interactions between these three products coming to the blood transfer techniques blood transfer techniques are nothing but the procedures employed for identification detection of a product a certain product which is formed that may be dna that may be rna that may be protein or we can study interaction between dna 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 RNA 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 and protein RNA or DNA protein or maybe we can employ that in identification or detection of protein protein lipid protein or lipid and RNA interactions <coughs> this blotting compass will give you a idea about the different blotting uh, techniques available and the particular purpose of, of that uh, blotting technique we know the it started with southern blotting and southern blotting is you employed for detection of dna later on when it came to rna it was labeled as northern blotting and when we could identify a particular protein developed so it was named as western blotting technique and now you see a large variety of blotting techniques available there like the eastern blotting technique is employed for understanding post translational modifications Middle Eastern is for RNA and DNA interactions. Far Eastern is for lipid and post-translational modifications. So coming to the southern part, the southern western is protein and DNA interaction. Then electrophoretic mobility shift assays identify DNA protein interactions and role of protein in expression of a particular gene. Then coming to the western side, because it is de- it is dealing with the identification or detection of protein. developed in a particular procedure so the far eastern is going to identify protein and protein interactions and the north western because it is between rna and protein it gives you idea of uh, protein rna interactions these are the various blot transfer techniques using blot transfer technique and a particular probe of interest to probe complemented to the sequence of interest you can identify anything amongst this dna rna or protein and you can study their interactions amongst each other now coming to details of blot transfer techniques first let us understand what are probes so probe is nothing but an oligonucleotide single stranded dna and to get detected properly it is labeled with a radioactive isotope or a fluorescent dye if it gets and bind to the particular sequence of interest so it that is called as hybridization the nucleotide sequence of which is complemented to the target dna so the probe is designed or you know manufactured in such a way that it is complemented to the sequence of interest that sequence may be of dna or maybe a uh, rna or amino acid sequence in proteins also it is used to identify complementary sequences by means of hybridization hybridization is nothing but the probe binding to the complementary sequences in dna or rna or protein the dna is nicked a few breaks are made and those are repaired and during this process 32 phosphorus labeled deoxycytidine triphosphate is added and therefore the radioactivity is tagged into the gene and which after hybridization will show you evidences of radioactivity and the particular sequence can be identified this is called as nick translation and non radioactive probes are also available and fluorescent probes are easier to detect by detecting the fluorescence then coming to southern blot technique first of all see what are blot transfer techniques the visualization and identification of a specific dna or rna fragment or protein so among the many thousands of molecules require the convergence of a number of techniques which are called collectively as blot transfer techniques and the blot transfer techniques was developed by edwin southern in 1975 for dna it is based on specific base pairing properties of uh, complementary nucleic acid strands and hybridization using a probe
This is used to detect a specific segment of DNA in the whole genome. It will identify a complementary sequence and it will bind. That is called as hybridization. This is how a particular sequence in DNA is identified. The steps that are normally employed in a southern blot technique of uh, DNA is first of all, there will be cleavage. The DNA is cleaved with the help of uh, restriction on the endonuclease at uh, specific sites. Okay, this process we know the action of restriction endonuclease is we know it cleaves the DNA at a specific predetermined site. Then there is electrophoresis. So, all the fragments or the digested products of uh, DNA after action of restriction endonucleases will be run in electrophoresis and these DNA fragments are separated by agarose gel electrophoresis or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. <coughs> then it is subjected to the blotting. What is blotting? The separated DNA fragments are transferred to a sheet of nitrocellulose by a flow of buffer. So, we have a product of uh, electrophoresis right in the gel and this gel is you know attached to the nitrocellulose paper and by the flow of buffer with a current these DNA fragments are you know stuck to the nitrocellulose paper from the gel. Okay, So, that is just a transfer of the material of interest to the nitrocellulose paper for further step that is hybridization. So, that is why it is called as blot transfer techniques. Okay, the blot of a gene or a protein or a RNA of interest or a material of interest is transferred to the nitrocellulose paper before hybridization. So, that is called as blot transfer technique. And these fragments bind to the nitrocellulose creating a replica of the pattern of DNA fragments which we see in electrophoresis pattern. We can see on nitrocellulose paper also because it is just transferred. Then coming to the last step that is hybridization. The hybridization of fragments with a labeled probe is the step and this probe has a homology with the gene of interest that is complementary and the probe is hybridized to filter. The probe can be purified RNA, can be complemented DNA or a segment of cloned DNA. Okay, It will go find its homology, complementarity and will bind and hybridize. Maybe it is fluorescent probe or a radioactive probe and you can detect with the help of radioactivity or fluorescence and detect the presence of a particular gene of interest. Particul particular sequence of interest may be DNA, may be RNA or a sequence of amino acid in proteins. And then this is autoradiography that we have discussed. This is the final step just detection of the uh, presence of a particular sequence of interest. The pattern of bands that contain the DNA fragments and the fragments that contain the gene are visualized by virtue of radiation or if we have used fluorescent probes, so fluorescence will uh, help us identify the DNA fragments Okay, in southern blot technique. And while discussing the southern blot technique, we have discussed the steps and the steps are almost similar in northern blot technique and southern blot technique. And uh, only difference is it identifies the RNA. So, total cellular RNA or isolated mRNA is subjected to agarose gel electrophoresis and in the presence of denaturing agent to remove secondary structure constraints which are there in RNA, right? So, that we need to remove impurities in RNA mixture and it is subjected to the electrophoresis. And after we find the purified products, the blot transfer is employed. So, the gel is blotted with the difference that paper has been treated chemically so that it will co covalently bind RNA. So, next step is hybridization. A labeled probe is used. Okay, We have seen that in southern blot technique. This allows visualization of the RNA species that are complementary to the probe. <coughs> Coming to western blot technique. Only difference is the proteins are identified. Rest of the processes are same. Like proteins are first isolated from the tissues. Uh, electrophoresis is run. We need to fix the proteins. So, after the electrophoresis of the whole protein is done and transferred onto the nitrocellulose membrane, they needs to be fixed because it has to be covalently bound to the nitrocellulose paper. Then probing. After fixation, the protein is probed with a radioactive antibody. Here the probe is antibody. It is not mRNA or complementary DNA because protein as an antigen can be identified the antibody against that particular protein sequence. Okay. So, that has to be radioactive or fluorescent. Mostly radioactive antibodies are used. With the help of autoradiography, which is the final step, the pattern of bands that contain proteins are visualized by virtue of uh, radiation from the probe. 
the western blot technique is uh, useful to identify the production of specific protein in a tissue so expression of a gene and production of protein can be studied with the help of western blot technique this is the literature once again i'll recommend you to go through the literature and uh, to further deeper studies on molecular biology and genetics thank you so much for watching the video hope you subscribe to the channel hit like and share the video thank you so much